The world said it's October and Edinburgh said, hold my beer because oh my God, has it turned cold overnight. <laughs> it's as if October started and Edinburgh just went bam, autumn, which I appreciate, we love that. But it does mean that we can finally crack out the jumpers as if I haven't already, but crack out the jumpers and not look weird for it have all the hot drinks that I was already having. And I'm currently sat here in a blanket because I'm, I'm that cold. <laughs> but hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing my September reading wrap up. September was the month of both Bookopolathon and the Magical Readathon. And I'm fairly sure that I actually read all of the books <laughs> that I plan to. Actually, no, minus one. The only book that I didn't read from my TBR was How We Fall Apart, which I really do still want to read. So hopefully at some point this year. So I do have quite a large stack of books next to me that I am just going to whittle my way through. September was a really weird reading month because I feel like I don't have that many good ratings, but I also didn't get sulky or slumpy like I normally do when I am not enjoying what I'm reading. And I think it's because I was getting close to what I wanted to read. And all the books that I rated like pretty bad ratings, I read very quickly. So it didn't feel like I had a bad reading month because I was just happy to be reading autumnal books. But I did have two DNFs and one of them, well, in fact, both of them I might return to at some point, but one of them I will definitely return to at some point. The other one, not so much. So the one that I don't know whether I will return to or not is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. This one is an arc that was very kindly sent to me by the publisher and it's the second book in the Scholomance series, the first one being A Deadly Education. Now this one, I I didn't love A Deadly Education. I rated it about three stars and I was intrigued enough to see if I would enjoy this one. The answer is no. End of review. <laughs> This is one that I could have forced myself to finish reading, but I just really didn't want to because it's one of the first ones I picked up in September and I didn't want to have that reflect the rest of my reading mood through the month. But in the first one, Adult Education, we are following a girl called... What's her name? Oh, Elle. She's called Elle. We follow a girl called Elle who goes to the Scholomance, the Scholomance being a magical school designed to keep magical teenagers, I guess, out of the way because monsters are attracted to their magic. So they can't really just be left to their own devices outside in the real world. However, because they're all here in the Scholomance, they are also attracted to the Scholomance itself. And so to graduate, you basically just have to survive. <laughs> Now this one is a really strange one because I do like Naomi Novik's writing that I've read of it so far, but I do not like it in this book. This is a very different style of writing compared to her Uprooted and Spinning Silver. And I just cannot get along with it because every single thing about this feels forced. Elle is a character who is sarcastic. She does not give a damn what other people think. And she has a very specific narrational tone that I just, despise because she goes on so many tangents about things that literally do not matter and they don't come in at any point in the book. She has such a long-winded way of narrating things that I just get bored. As well as that, like I said, a lot of this feels forced to me, specifically Elle's personality. I have this thing where if a main character has to tell me that they are a bad person or that they're not like other people, that they're edgy in some way, I just instantly don't believe them. I have to be sure and not told. And I don't see it in Elle. I know a lot of people do, so maybe that's just me. <laughs> but I read this book and just think, sure, hon. Like if she was stood in front of me trying to talk the way that she does in this book, I would literally just look at her like, shut up. <laughs> I just don't believe it. It's laughable to me. And sadly, I don't like any of the characters enough to actually continue reading their stories. I'm not even sure what the plot is. <laughs> because it did just feel like I was aimlessly walking around the Scholomance for no good reason. We didn't even see her in classes a lot of the time. So I was like, why are we here? What are we doing? I don't understand. So I got just under a hundred pages into this one and was already tired of it. So I just decided to put it down. Not my thing. The second one I DNF'd is one that I definitely do plan to come back to and that is Teeth in the Mist by Dawn Kurtzkitch. This one I DNF'd mainly because I just got distracted. But this is a horror book that's told in a multimedia format in which we follow two timelines. The story is based around Mill House, which is an old abandoned building on the edge of a mountain. And in the modern day, we follow a girl who goes to Mill House, starts taking photos and just generally exploring because she feels like she has some kind of connection to her dad there who has since died, but once visited Mill House himself. And so she wanted to find out why he visited in the first place. So she goes there exploring, 
weird things start happening. And we also have the past timeline in which we find out who previously lived there and how it ended up being such a creepy haunted house on the edge of a mountain. I will say this one took me by surprise in that the way that that synopsis is set up makes it sound like you are focused primarily in the modern day and then looking back, finding clues and hints and pieces and a story together. And while that does happen, it's definitely not the main focus of this book. The main focus of this book is actually in the past timeline and that's where you spend a lot of the time. So that kind of threw me and I feel like that kind of goes towards why I lost interest a little bit because it just wasn't what I was expecting or wanting at the time. But I did get about halfway through and I was enjoying what I read. Unfortunately, I did just put it down and get distracted. So I tried picking it back up, but just found that my interest had been lost. So I am going to DNF it for now and come back to it another time when I'm more in the mood for it. One of the first books that I read in September was was the murder of Graham Catton by Katie Lowe. We are following a woman called Hannah who years ago her husband was murdered and now years later there is a really popular podcast focusing in on this crime, ripping everything open with new evidence and basically accusing her of the murder. However, she can't remember what happened. And so we're going through this book. We don't know what's happened. We have an unreliable narrator, which is one of my favorite tropes. And that was definitely one of the strongest parts of this book because we're following this from Hannah's perspective. And so as a reader, you instinctively want to trust them because that's where you're getting your information from. But you start to very slowly see where her stories have cracks in it. You see where she's editing the story you see her actively adjusting her own memories and her story based on who she's talking to and how she presents herself definitely changes with every single character that we come across. And I just found it fascinating, especially as well because she actually works as a psychiatrist, I believe. And so she knows the psychology behind this kind of stuff. It just made for a very interesting psychological thriller. There were so many moments in this where I wasn't actually sure what was going on. I didn't really predict where it was going at all. I do wish that the podcast element of this was actually told through a multimedia format because I feel like it would have just worked better that way. And I do think it took a little bit of time to actually start revealing anything that would keep me intrigued. The first half of this was definitely more of a character and family building situation, but then that did also prove effective when things did start to be revealed because everything you've just learned about all of these people started to break down and you didn't know who to trust anymore. So I really enjoyed this one. I rated it four out of five stars. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as The Furies, but I think The Furies is more just my aesthetic when it comes to this kind of thrilly story because that one's got like dark academia vibes, witchy stuff. But as just a straight up thriller, I enjoyed this one a lot. Someone who has become a staple in pretty much all of my wrap ups is Robin Hobb. This one is Fool's Fate, the third and final book in the Tony Man trilogy. Reading this one for Elder Lingalong, you know the jam by now. I'll leave a link to the live show down below because I feel like if anything, that's where most of the thoughts will be because all of the spoilers. There's not really much I can say about this one without spoilers. And honestly, I didn't really find myself having too much to say. This did prove to be probably one of my least favorite of Robin Hobb that we've read so far. But that's not to say it was bad. I still rated this four stars, I still enjoyed it, and I can still appreciate Robin Hobb's writing, the character development, everything like that. Everything that I would just say about Robin Hobb in general, her world, her plots, everything is incredible. But I found more flaws in this one, or not flaws, but more things that I personally would have expected to be done differently from what I've read previously from Robin Hobb. For instance, the first 300, 400 pages of this book, as usual when it comes to the final book in any of her series, it seems, are incredibly slow. It followed the same path as her previous final books and series did in which it's basically just a very long journey full of character building. But this one differed for me because in the previous two series that has ended up having a point and you kind of needed that time to see the little changes that these characters were going through during this journey. This one, however, I didn't really get the point. <laughs> There was something happening in the beginning half of this book that proved very, very repetitive to me. And I thought that that would have a bigger point, but it didn't. I still don't know why we spent quite so much time on that specific topic, but I came to be even more confused by that when I read the second half of the book because a lot of the more impactful stuff in this book happened off page. From what people had said about this book, I was expecting to be distraught. I thought I would be soul destroyed. I thought there would be clips of me just pouring my entire heart through my eyeballs. That's a grim image. But you know, I thought I would just be devastated in tears. That didn't happen. I didn't cry. I didn't actually feel all that much, which surprised me because what happened should have 
elicited some kind of emotional response from me but it just didn't because a lot of it happened off page you didn't see it you didn't feel it and that combined with how quickly this book was wrapped up again I don't understand why the first 300 pages focus so intensely on one specific thing that kept coming up for 300 pages when a lot of that could have been shortened and the stuff that should have had more of an impact could have been extended in the book so I was just a bit confused about this one it was very all over the place but I did still enjoy it I don't have any new positives to say which is why this sounds like quite a bad review but it's just because everything that I already love and have said about Hob you know I've already said it so <laughs> Amazing plot, characters, world building, all of that. Just not my fave of her books so far. Next up we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, which I'm not going to talk about too much because I do have a full review video that is spoiler free on my channel, so I'll leave a link to that down below and also up here. This one is a young adult dark academia book, which heads up. I read a few Dark Academia books, so you're gonna hear that a lot. <laughs> but in this one, we're following Felicity, who goes to Dalloway School. She's actually been away from Dalloway for a year because her previous girlfriend died, and so she, you know, left school to grieve and to deal with that. But in this book, we see her returning and revisiting the place that all of this happened, where all of her memories lie. We see her trying to adjust and sink back into a school year, even though she doesn't know anyone anymore because everyone she knew has now graduated. She gets to know a girl called Ellis, who is a writer. And between the two of them, they end up getting sucked into this kind of research project in which they are researching the Dalloway Five, who are five girls, the very first students to attend Dalloway, who all mysteriously died one by one and were thought to be witches. As Felicity and Ellis get more and more involved with researching this past, they start to see history repeat itself. This one I had many conflicting feelings about because generally I enjoyed it. It was fun. I liked the aesthetic. I liked the just general reading about people in a school and witchcraft and stuff like that but I did have quite a few criticisms with it. A large one being that I just couldn't really take it too seriously because the dark academia aesthetic definitely felt like it was just doing it for the aesthetic. I didn't get the tension or this inescapable feeling or any kind of intensity that I would expect from a dark academia and I do think a lot of that is down to it being a young adult book so I don't know how far you can go in dark academia when it's set towards a younger audience but it definitely could have felt darker like I didn't feel an atmosphere at all. Even though they were constantly talking about murder and witches and stuff, I was just kind of like, yeah, standard day. <laughs> so this book to me just felt very much like a Pinterest board in book form because it was just for the aesthetic and I found that highly ironic because there are conversations in this book about how other characters do witchy stuff just for the aesthetic rather than actually caring about it and yeah I just found it really ironic because that's exactly what this book felt like to me. <laughs> I also just generally didn't really get along with the ending. I laughed at it because it was so far-fetched to me but I felt like there was a lot that could have been built on to make this more impactful I guess but it was fun it was a quick read I enjoyed it I would still recommend it to people who just generally like this sort of vibe and are looking for dark academia books I think I just personally prefer dark academia books that feel really intense and this didn't pull through with that unfortunately so I rated it three stars I then read <laughs> My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix I have been meaning to read this one for such a long time so many people love this book I did not this one is pretty much exactly what the title says. There are two girls, one of them is possessed by a demon, the other one tries to save her. This one has an 80s vibe, as you can probably tell from the cover. Lots of pop culture references from that time, which I was kind of hesitant about because I personally just don't like pop culture references in books all that much. But that actually wasn't the reason why I disliked this book. <laughs> I am honestly a little bit confused about why this is so loved because I found it incredibly simplistic. <laughs> there was nothing spectacular about this book at all. I almost DNF this one as well because I was so bored of the writing. A lot of the time it was just the basic he said, she said, listing everything that was happening rather than any kind of description. Did not feel an atmosphere at all. Didn't feel any kind of danger. She was supposed to be possessed by a demon and I was just like sure if you say so. <laughs> and I actually found it really annoying <laughs> because I just did not like reading the school experience in this book. Granted it was probably very authentic but I just was so bored reading about people bickering between classes and talking about lipstick and makeup and how to do their hair. I just did not care. And there was absolutely nothing about the plot that was distinct enough to make me think, yeah, that was a good story because I've already read the story. It's just a basic exorcism story. I rated this two stars, but on reflection, I think I might drop that to one because I just didn't really care at all. 
and there's not really anything positive I can say about my reading experience besides I read it quickly. So I was actually really disappointed about that because I have been wanting to try more of Grady Hendrix's books and now I'm just like, don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. Another book that's uh, got a scathing review for me. <laughs> this one's more funny. Um, the Maidens by Alex Michaelides. This one again is a dark academia book. This time adult. We follow a woman who is a group therapist and her niece goes to some kind of university. I can't remember which one. Her niece calls her one day really panicked saying that she thinks her friend has been murdered. So this woman Mariana goes to visit her niece to see what's going on. Her niece's friend has indeed been murdered and her niece is convinced that one of the professors has something to do with this. Now Mariana starts looking into this and she becomes more and more convinced that this professor is murdering his students especially because he seems to have some sort of like weird very specific designated group of girls that are just obsessed with him and do everything he says and so she starts digging around to try and prove that right basically. <sighs> now this was just bad guys. I read this one in a matter of hours and I'm glad I did because if I had extended it for any amount of time I probably would have DNF'd this one as well. It was so obvious where this was going to go from the very beginning mainly because Alex Michaelides is so heavy-handed in trying to throw red herrings that it just fails completely and basically pointed out exactly where I should be looking because he was very loudly going, no, don't look at that, look over there. <laughs> and so I knew, even though the actual thing didn't make sense, I knew exactly where this book was going to go pretty much from the beginning because he made every other character suspicious. He made all of them seem a bit off so that you would be like, oh, there's something wrong with them. I'm gonna suspect them of murder besides one person who was apparently adored by everybody. And I'm like, the writing itself wasn't anything special. Again, didn't feel an atmosphere. I find atmosphere really important when it comes to this sort of story, if you haven't guessed already. <laughs> I didn't get the university vibe because we barely really saw any of it. I also just didn't really understand why we were following Mariana's perspective because it was really random. I guess the only real reason why we're following her perspective is because of what the plot twist is. But to me, having her as the narrator and the person who we're following the story through just lost all impact entirely because we weren't close enough to the actual crime. We weren't close enough to the murder. And it also meant that every tiny bit of detail that she managed to get access to, every time she infiltrated the investigation in some way, I just didn't believe it because I'm like why would anybody let you in? Who are you? No one knows who you are. <laughs> she was just some random person's on walking around <laughs> interrogating people as if she had the right to. <laughs> I just didn't understand that. There were a lot of conveniences as well especially when it came to how she gained access to certain things. There was one character who just very conveniently kept popping up and being like oh she's with me because that was how she would get out of things. We didn't hear from that character any other time besides those moments and this took such a long build up to then eventually get to this kind of plot twist that just <laughs> again, didn't really make sense, despite being glaringly obvious from the beginning, that it just felt very lacklustre come the end and I was like, sure, sure, if that's what you're going with. <laughs> again, this is one that I laughed at when I read it. Um, I don't know what it will take for me to believe a thriller plot twist because apparently this month was testing me and no, no. Even just like the Greek myth references, you would think it was more of a thing. No, but I have genuinely sat and tried to think of any positive to say about this book since I read it. And the only one I can come up with is that it was a quick read. So one star. <laughs> to have some more positive experiences though, I do have a Dark Academia book that I did actually enjoy. And that was Madame by Phoebe Wynn. This one, we are set in a boarding school that is kind of out of the way on the edge of a Scotch cliff somewhere. It's very remote, very isolated. And we follow an ancient classics professor who is just joining the school. She's just started teaching there. When she first arrived, she thinks that things are a little bit odd, but you know, maybe it's just a quirk of sorts. But the longer she stays there, she starts realizing that these weird things go a bit deeper than that. And so she starts digging around, but uh, <laughs> I didn't expect this to go the way it did but I'm glad it did because I thought this was going to be more of a tame dark academia, but the way it went, 
I actually really enjoyed. It definitely felt like more of a feminist dark academia because the main character had a lot to say about feminism and how the girls in this book were being treated, but that did also contribute to what the point of this book was, I guess, and I actually really enjoyed what it did with that. But this one had the atmosphere that all the other ones have been lacking so far. This felt eerie, it felt creepy, it had that really like lurking sense of there's something creeping in the background and you don't quite know what it is, you just feel unnerved. You knew that you were in a remote, Scottish, foggy, cold, isolated setting that you couldn't escape from and the inescapable feeling was actually there, which I think is so important when it comes to Dark Academia books. And I found it interesting following the perspective of a professor because usually it's the students that I tend to read from, but it was intriguing to see somebody enter the school supposedly with authority and see how even that can be a power play. I will say this one fell a lot slower than the other ones, but I think that is definitely to its advantage when it comes to the atmosphere and maybe that's what it needed more of. It's less thriller and more Dark Academia. <laughs> I don't know. I do feel like it could have been either shortened a little bit in the first half or give some kind of different hint that something was wrong because the mystery elements did start to feel a little bit repetitive. But other than that, I just generally really enjoyed reading this one. Read it in two sittings, rated it four stars. <laughs> and then finally we have what was probably my favourite book of the month, You Let Me In by Camilla Bruce. This one actually took me a little while to read despite being really small, but I just really enjoyed it. This one is a perfect example of the is it psychological or is it supernatural trope that I just love and it was the very reason why I picked this up because in this one we are following a writer called Cassandra who has actually gone missing at the beginning of this book and she's left a manuscript behind which is basically instructions for her niece and nephew that they have to follow to gain their inheritance. Part of it being that they have to read this manuscript and her manuscript is telling her side of the story when it comes to her husband's murder, her father's murder and her brother's murder. She's somehow associated with all of these things, everyone kind of believes that she did it but it's never been proven that she did and now that she has also mysteriously vanished the air of mystery is being unraveled. Depending how you read it though, this manuscript either tells the story of a girl who was chosen by fairies and has lived half her life amongst the fairies, or you know, one of mental illness and psychological spirals all throughout her life. This one is so eerie, but in a way that you wouldn't expect because it's all very normal. It's presented as a very standard thing. It's almost like her story has a layer of the macabre to it because there's a lot of references to dead things, dead birds, skulls, and you have things that are seen as weird but are just completely normal to her and that also makes it kind of weird because she's a young girl at the start of this book and somehow tied in with these really creepy things that are related to death somehow. It just feels unnatural, you know, and it just had that vibe down so well. But also it is very, very clever in how it does the psychological versus supernatural thing because there are hints from the very first page that this might not be a reliable narrator. We are definitely hearing her point of view and she does put in other people's points of view but I was constantly changing my mind about which perspective I believed and I still don't quite know what I believe because every time I started thinking one way there would be some tiny little slip that made me think oh I, I'm doubting myself now, I'm doubting this story. I believe that's how it should be done. I feel like this was a really good example of how that trope can just be so enticing and addictive to read because you just need to know more. You're trying to find more proof to figure out what you believe and then you're left with the end. I really, really enjoyed this one. I think that a lot of people would actually really enjoy this one. It's definitely a weird one. I feel like if you enjoyed Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford, you would definitely enjoy this one. I rated it four out of five stars. So those are all the books that I read this month. Quite a hefty stack. As always, do let me know if you've read any of them and also let me know what your favorite read of September was. If you want to leave a comment, say hi, but you don't know what to say, leave me a, what emoji should we go for? Leave me the candle emoji. But for now, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so we know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.